Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. The present topic is structure of atom class 9 module 2. Please subscribe and give your comments. We discussed about the models of atom in the previous module that is Thomson's model of atom and Rutherford's model of atom and important points in those models. Now let us discuss the defects in Rutherford's model. Rutherford stated that electrons revolve around the nucleus like planets revolve around the sun. So this is nucleus and this is electron. As per Clark Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, if a charged particle revolves around a fixed point, then it loses its energy continuously. And we know that nucleus has positive charge and electron has negative charge. So, as electron revolves around the nucleus continuously, as per electromagnetic theory, electron loses its energy continuously. As it loses energy continuously, it falls within the attractive force of the nucleus. Therefore, comes closure to the nucleus, revolves like a spiral spring and finally falls into the nucleus. This is revolves like a spiral spring. So, finally, finally, electron falls into nucleus. If positive charge and negative charge come close to each other, energy releases, energy releases and atom destroys, uh, atom collapse, atom collapses, but this is not happening because life is possible, this is not happening, that means atom is stable, atom is stable. Rutherford's could not explain why atom is stable. So, Rutherford's model, Rutherford's model could not explain, could not explain why atom is stable. So, Rutherford's model could not explain why atom is stable. Now, let us see another defect. If an electron loses energy continuously, a continuous spectrum should be formed. Spectrum means we can understand a band of colors, a band of colors. So, the energy released by electron is caught on a photography film, therefore a spectrum is obtained. As electron loses energy continuously, a continuous spectrum is to be obtained just like a rainbow. In a rainbow, rainbow has seven colors, all the seven colors, they are merged, merged with each other. So this is rainbow colors with GR in this manner. Or if you reverse it, so violet mixes with indigo, indigo mixes with blue, blue mixes with green, etc. So the colors merge with one another as we observe in the rainbow. That is continuous spectrum. So as electron releases or radiates energy continuously, a continuous spectrum like rainbow should be obtained. But experiments proved that a line spectrum is obtained. Line spectrum. Line spectrum means all the colors, all the lines are discrete with each other. Discrete means individual. So, Rutherford's model, it could explain, it proposed the nucleus of the atom which is the most important, but at the end it could not give the stability of atom. Now, let us recapitulate the demerits in Rutherford's model of atom. When an electron revolves in a circular 
path as shown in the figure it has acceleration moreover electron is attracted by the nucleus according to maxwell's electromagnetic theory a charged particle in motion loses energy continuously electron also being a charged particle loses energy continuously as a result revolves like a spiral spring gradually comes closer to the nucleus and finally falls into the nucleus hence atom destroys and a lot of energy releases rutherford's model thus could not explain the stability of atom as electron loses energy continuously a continuous spectrum as in the case of rainbow is to be obtained in continuous spectrum the colors are merged with one another but experiments showed that a line spectrum in which discrete lines are observed would be resulted in place of continuous spectrum this is the figure showing continuous spectrum this is the rainbow colors or we can call it as a visible spectrum so these are the colors vibgr colors one color is merged with its next color thus it is referred as continuous spectrum let us know about ernest rutherford ernest rutherford was born at spring grove on august 30th 1871 he was known as the father of nuclear physics he did since he did a lot and he was responsible to find the nucleus as nucleus invented the development of science accelerated he is a famous for his work on radioactivity and the discovery of nucleus of an atom with the gold foil experiment he got the nobel prize in 1908 so to rectify the defects in rutherford's model niels bohr niels bohr proposed his model of atom so bohr's model of atom so he proposed that electrons revolve around the nucleus in certain definite circular orbits see in rutherford's model it was not mentioned whether there is one orbit or more than one orbit for electrons whereas bohr stated that a fixed number of orbits are available depending upon the number of electrons present in the atom that is say this is nucleus first orbit second orbit so depending on the number of electrons in the atom there may be one orbit or two orbits or three orbits or four orbits like that so this is the first orbit is denoted as k second is denoted as l third orbit denoted as m fourth orbit denoted as n in this manner so electrons revolve in fixed number of orbits fixed number of orbits so these orbits are denoted as k l m n and so on these orbits are also numbered as orbits orbits are numbered numbered and denoted denoted by n so n equal to 1 2 3 4 and so on this is n equal to 1 n equal to 2 n equal to 3 n equal to 4 etc right now as long as electrons revolve in their orbits so they neither lose energy neither lose energy nor gain energy they neither lose energy nor gain energy that means as long as electron revolves in its own orbit the energy is fixed that's why these orbits are referred as stationary orbits stationary means no change fixed then when there will be change in energy so and moreover these electrons revolving in their orbits they have certain amount of energy electrons in their orbits orbits have certain energy 
certain energy. So, n equal to 1, it is close to the nucleus, close to the nucleus and has least energy, close to the nucleus and has least energy. That means electrons revolving in the, in the orbits which are very close to nucleus, they have least energy. As electron moves farther from the nucleus, that is n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. As electron moves far away from, it, from the nucleus, then energy goes on increasing. Thus, we can say uh, n equal to 1, it, it is referred as lower energy level. Lower energy level. n equal to 4, higher energy level. Higher energy level. Now, if we compare n equal to 1 and 2, n is 1 has less energy, therefore its energy is divided by E1, and n equal to 2 it has more energy than that of in 1, therefore its energy is referred as E2. So, this is a high energy level, this is lower energy level. Now, when electron jumps from lower level to higher level, then it takes energy, that is it absorbs energy. Then, electron moves from when electrons move from lower level to higher level energy is absorbed energy is absorbed how much energy is absorbed energy absorbed is divided by delta e delta e equal to e2 minus e1 the difference of those two levels Energy is absorbed. Similarly, when electron jumps from higher level to lower level, higher level to lower level, then energy releases. Energy releases. When electron jumps from higher level to lower level, then energy releases. So, in this way, what happens as electrons revolve in certain definite circular orbits, they do not fall into the nucleus as which is to be expected in Rutherford's model. In order to overcome the objections raised against Rutherford's model of atom, Niels Bohr put forward the following postulates. So let us recapitulate the important points in Bohr's model. Electrons revolve only in certain discrete orbits allowed in the atom. These orbits are named as K, L, M, N and so on. Bohr proposed principal quantum number to represent these orbits and they are also numbered as 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So you can show these, uh, you can see these orbits uh, in the figure. Uh, so this is a nucleus, K shell and whose number is M equal to 1, L, M, N and so on. As long as electrons revolve in their own orbits, they do not radiate energy. That is, they do not lose energy or do not gain energy. Hence, these orbits are referred as stationary orbits. Energy of electrons revolve in their orbits depend upon the distance of the orbit from the nucleus. Energy of electron in the orbit which is closer to the nucleus has the least energy and the energy of electron in the orbit in the farthest orbit is maximum since the electron in the orbit has certain amount of energy these orbits are also referred as energy levels thus the orbit closer to the nucleus is referred referred as a lower energy level and the orbit which is farther from the nucleus is referred to as higher energy level. Whenever an electron jumps from lower energy level to higher level, it absorbs energy which is equal to the difference in energies of those two levels. Releases or radiates energy when electron jumps from higher level to lower level. Therefore, the energy absorbed or released given by delta E, delta E equal to E2 minus E1, where E2 is the energy of a higher level, whereas E1 is the energy of a lower level. Now, let us know about Niels Bohr. 
Niels Bohr was born in Copenhagen on 7th October 1885. He was appointed professor of physics at Copenhagen University in 1916. He got the Nobel Prize for his work on the structure of atom in 1922. Among Professor Bohr's numerous writings, he wrote many books and among all his books and writings, three appearing as books as The Theory of Spectra and Atomic Constitution, Atomic Theory and The Description of Nature. In 1932, James Chadwick invented another particle which has no charge and mass almost equal to the proton. It was named as neutron. It is present in the nucleus along with the proton. The presence of protons in the nucleus causes its positive charge and protons and neutrons makes it massive. Now let us know about the elementary particles or subatomic particles or fundamental particles. Particle electron, proton and neutron. Relative mass of electron is 1 by 1837th part of proton whereas relative mass of proton and neutron is 1 each. Mass in kilograms, mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kilograms whereas mass of proton is 1.6726 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms and the mass of neutron is 1.6749 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilogram which is a slightly higher than that of a proton. Relative charge of electron is minus 1 unit whereas proton is plus 1 unit and neutron does not have any charge. Charge in coulombs, charge of electron is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs of negative charge whereas Proton has the same charge but in positive. Neutron does not have any charge. We conclude this module here. Thank you.